I said it during the campaign, and I'll say it now. We need an all-of-the-above approach to energy policy. That means proven conventional resource development and support for nuclear power. And I was thankful that the president at least mentioned nuclear power in a State of the Union. But again, we need more than words. We need a plan to turn that goal into a reality. And that way, we can pave the way for projects that will create jobs. Those are real job creators and deliver carbon-free energy. And while we're at it, let's expedite the regulatory and permitting and legal processes for on and offshore drilling. Instead of paying billions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars that now are being sent to foreign regimes, we should be drilling here and drilling now instead of relying on them to develop their resources for us. So what we've got to do is ask that plan for cap and tax, that policy that's going to kill jobs and it's going to pass the burden of paying for it onto our working families. And finally, if we're going to get serious about fiscal restraint, then we've got to make Washington start walking the walk. After putting us on a track to quadruple the deficit, the proposed spending freeze, maybe it's a start, but it's certainly not enough, as Senator John Thune said. It's like putting a Band-Aid on a self-inflicted gunshot wound. We need to go further, cut spending, don't just simply slow down a spending spree, and we've got to ax the plans for a second stimulus when the first hasn't even been measured for any success yet. Kill the plans for the second stimulus. And beware that now that second stimulus is being referred to as a jobs bill. Now, these aren't the only ways to rein in spending, and alone they're not going to be enough not enough to tackle the insane debt and the deficits that we face, but they are a good way to start and to show that we're serious about getting our financial house in order. Now, like a lot of you, perhaps, I have spent the last year thinking about how, how to best serve. How can I help our country? How can I make sure that I, that you, that we're in a position of nobody being able to succeed when they try to tell us to sit down and shut up? How can we best serve? In 2008, I had the honor, really, of a lifetime, the honor of a lifetime running alongside John McCain. I look at him as an American hero. And nearly 60 million Americans voted for us. They cast their ballot for the things that we are talking about tonight. Lower taxes, smaller government, transparency, energy independence, and strong national security. And while, no, our votes did not carry the day, it was still a call to serve our country. Those voters wanted us to keep on fighting and take the gloves off, and they wanted common sense conservative solutions, and they wanted us to keep on debating, and each of us who is here today are living proof that you don't need an office or a title to make a difference, and you don't need a proclaimed leader, as if we're all just a bunch of sheep and we're looking for a leader to progress this movement. That is what we're fighting for, it's what we're fighting about, it's what we believe in, and that's what this movement is all about. When people are willing and to meet halfway and stand up for common sense solutions and values, then we want to work with them. And in that spirit, I applaud independence and Democrats like Bart Stupak, who stood up to tough partisan pressure, and he wanted to protect the sanctity of life and the rights of the soon-to-be-born. I applaud him for that. When we can work together, we will. But when the work of Washington violates our, cons our conscience, and, and when the work and efforts in Washington, D.C. violate our Constitution, then we will stand up and we will be counted because we are the loyal opposition. And we have a vision for the future of our country too, and it is a vision anchored in time-tested truths. That the government that governs least governs best. And that the Constitution, the Constitution provides the best roadmap towards a more perfect union. <laughs> 
and that only limited government can expand prosperity and opportunity for all, and that freedom is a God-given right, and it is worth fighting for. God bless you. And that America's finest, our men and women in uniform, are a force for good throughout the world, and that is nothing to apologize for. And these enduring truths have been passed down from Washington to Lincoln to Reagan and now to you. But while this movement, it's our roots, they are in our spirit too, they are historic. Our, the current form of this movement is fresh and it's young and it's fragile. We are now the keepers of an honorable tradition of conservative values and good works. And we must never forget that it is a sacred trust to carry these ideas forward. It demands civility, and it requires decent, constructive, issue-oriented debate. Opponents of this message, they're seeking to marginalize this movement. They want to paint us as ideologically extreme and the counterpoint to liberal intolerance and some outrageous conspiracy theorists aimed at our own government, and unethical, shameless tactics like considering a candidate's children fair game. <laughs> but unlike the elitists who denounce this movement, they just don't want to hear the message. I've traveled across this great country, and I've talked to the patriotic men and women who make up the Tea Party movement, and. They are good and kind and selfless, and they are deeply concerned about our country. And today, I ask only this. Let's make this movement a tribute to their good example and make it worthy of their hard work and their support. Do not let us have our heads turned from the important work before us, and do not give others an excuse to be able to turn their eyes from this. Let us not get bogged down in the small squabbles. Let us get caught up in the big ideas. To do so would be a fitting tribute to Ronald Reagan, especially tonight, as he would have turned 99. No longer with us, his spirit lives on, and his American dream endures. He knew the best of our country is not all gathered in Washington, D.C. <sighs> It is here in our communities where families live and children learn and children with special needs are welcomed in this world and embraced. And thank you for that. Patriots are brave enough and free enough to be able to stand up and speak up and where small businesses grow our economy one job at a time and folks like Reagan we know that America is still that shining city on a hill I do believe that God shed his grace on thee we know that our best days are yet to come Tea Party Nation, we know that there is nothing wrong with America that together we can fix as Americans. So from the bottom of my heart, and speaking on behalf of millions and millions and millions of Americans who want to encourage this movement, this movement is about the people. Who can argue a movement that is about the people and for the people? Remember, all political power is inherent in the people, and government is supposed to be working for the people. That is what this movement is about. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for being part of the solution. God bless you, Tea Partiers, and God bless the USA. Thank you.